Jaundice. What is it? What might be causing it? And what that does to our bilirubin tests? Hi, if you're new to this channel, my name is Jonathan Downham and I'm an advanced critical care practitioner here in the UK. I've worked in critical care for over 25 years and during that time I have never stopped learning. I share a lot of that learning here on YouTube as well as on my podcast and on Facebook. All of the links you can find below. If you want to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, please do. In a previous video I discussed bilirubin metabolism which will help with understanding in this video. You can see the link above if you want to go watch that first. Now I'm going to talk about what might cause the bilirubin in the adult to rise. It is this bilirubin that will give jaundice the typical yellow colour when it rises high enough. The easiest way to understand it is to break it down into pre, intra and post hepatic causes. Prehepatic causes are those that are occurring before the bilirubin reaches the liver. The first place to start is with the red blood cells, as it is the breakdown of haemoglobin that creates bilirubin. So, if there is a greater production of red blood cells, such as in a polycythemia, then there will eventually be a greater number to be broken down. There could be greater hemolysis or breakdown of the cells, which can occur with anemias. The development of haematomas will also then result in the breakdown of red blood cells. Whenever you get a nasty bruise, the changes in colour are related to the creation of biliverdin and bilirubin. Remember that unconjugated bilirubin, that is the bilirubin before the liver, has to bind with albumin to be transported around the body. There are some drugs that will compete with this binding, breaking that bond. Examples of this are salicylates, frusamide, sulfonamides and radiographic contrast. This is more clinically important for infants rather than adults, however. So, it's important at this point to reiterate that the problem is pre-liver. Therefore, the unconjugated bilirubin levels may be high, but the liver enzymes, ALT, AST and ALKFOS, which are released when there is damage to the liver, will not. If they were, you would be less convinced that this was a prehepatic cause of a rise in bilirubin. Now let us move on to intrahepatic causes of a rise in bilirubin. This is where there is damage to the liver itself, which means that it is less able to add the glucuronic acid it needs in order to convert the unconjugated bilirubin, fat soluble, to conjugated bilirubin, water soluble. Due to the damage of the liver, there will also be release of amino transferases, alanine transferase, ALT, and aspartate transferase, AST. Amino transferases normally take part in the conversion of amino acids within the cells or hepatocytes of the liver. So with an intrahepatic cause of a rise in bilirubin, you would also expect to see a rise in both of the transferases. The relative rise is also important, but I cover this in another video. Such causes include viral hepatitis, alcoholism, fatty liver disease and some drugs. Post-hepatic causes of jaundice are mainly related to the biliary tree. Anything that slows down the movement of bile or cholestasis. So gallstones or strictures of the gallbladder or tumours within the biliary tree. This will cause the bilirubin to back up which will also cause liver damage. Unlike intrahepatic damage, where the alkaline phosphatase will rise only slightly, in post-hepatic causes, the ALP, alkaline phosphatase, will be significantly elevated. 
Alkaline phosphatase is released both in the liver and by the biliary tree when there is damage. This is an enzyme which can be found mainly in the liver, bone, biliary tree and the placenta. So other causes of arise could involve the bones or because the patient is pregnant. However, if the liver enzymes ALT and AST are also elevated, this would point towards the liver or the biliary tree being the problem and the main rise would be in conjugated bilirubin.